So the headlines are that I didn't manage to hit any of my 2023 goals in terms of the paces I wanted to try and hit, but I did manage to PB at the five to ten and a half mark. Mm -hmm. Hello, welcome back to the channel. So yeah, I'm filming again on the, my iPhone at the minute. I'm still waiting on my camera replacement. So those that don't know and to wear, uh, just after the failed aborted 10K time trial, uh, my camera decided to stop working. There was a, presumably a hardware issue. I, went, I contacted GoPro, they agreed it was a hardware issue. That's been sent back. There's a minor delay with it being exported back to, I think it's going back to the Netherlands. Um, I bought a, a replacement camera in the meantime. My wife kind of let me buy another one. Um, however, GoPro have confirmed that it's a hardware issue, it's under warranty. I'm now going to receive a better quality camera uh, as a replacement. So it felt it, it, there was no need to keep the, the replacement camera I, I purchased. So I returned that as well. So now I'm obviously with that camera now for the, oh, well, hopefully it's not very long, but might be a week or two. So I'm having to just manage on my phone at the minute, which is limiting my actually running vlogs. I can't really run with the camera, uh, with the phone, sorry, because it's got no stabilization. So I'm limited to this kind of. Uh, talking head kind of vlog so yeah um quick i'm trying to recap finally my 2023 i'm filming this uh, new year's eve evening i've done my last run um today i'll tag that uh, it might be there actually i'll tag that there so it was my last run of 2023 nice long half marathon again just i thought would have been a half marathon year of focus uh, i thought i'd do one more half marathon get that out of the way a nice long run to finish the year pretty happy with how that went felt pretty steezy throughout second half was a bit more difficult i didn't take any nutrition or water with me so uh, but yeah, happy to get the 2023 boxed off. That's my running done. So I thought I'd just do quickly do one last recap of 2023. Um, I did, I've already done the 2023 in terms of how things have gone. I've gone into detail about the half marathons, etc. Today is just going to be more about the stats and how I've progressed from 2022 to 2023. I just want to quickly touch upon uh, the Winter Speed Series. Uh, so again, those that followed along, you'll see that at the start, I wanted to try and improve my mile, my 5k, my 10k pace. I've obviously spent a lot of time this year working on half marathons, so I've not really done any shorter based speed work focus for a long for quite a while. So, um, and actually, I've really enjoyed the series. It's kind of uh, again, I probably mentioned it in some of the other vlogs. It's, it's now going to kind of guide me in terms of my twenty twenty four planning. And um, I think again, a couple of people on Strava or YouTube have pointed out uh, that I t tended to do a lot of my stuff with steady state, mid distance steady state stuff, which has always been my bread and butter. Um, but I felt, I felt that, especially that second half marathon training about this year for Cheshire, that I kind of relied upon that a bit too much. And this winter speed series has opened my eyes to that. I need to do more interval work, more intensive short bursts with, with recoveries. I don't can't, can't just keep doing uh, steady state jogs and distance running uh, and expect to get any further improvements. But I feel, I feel the winter speed series has been a massive success. I, I knocked six seconds off my mile, which is by the by, but I knocked 61 seconds off my 10K when I finally got around to finishing the uh, 10K time trial. I didn't manage to PB in the 5K, but that was purely because it's bad timing. I couldn't get it squeezed in prior to Christmas, and then I've uh, let things slide a little bit. But yeah, 5K, 10K mile. I really enjoyed the training. I really enjoyed the interval work, the threshold work, the really fast, hard efforts. Um, and I feel as fit as I've ever kind of done at the minute, even though I'm, I'm in the kind of period of winter now and uh, over the Christmas period, where I've not been running quite as much. So yeah, I'll just quickly go over the stats. They, they don't lie. Um, so subjectively, I can talk about how how good I think the year's gone, and I uh, kind of touched upon some of this in the in that previous twenty twenty three vlog I did it about a month ago when I was just recapping all the kind of training and obviously my two goal races that I focus on this year, the Chester and the Cheshire Half Marathons, which are my main focuses this year. Uh, but Coros, uh, which is the my running brand of choice, um, I don't use Garmin. I've never actually used Garmin. There's nothing stopping me in the future. But at the minute, I have a Coros. Um, and they've produced a kind of an annual report. Uh, it's the first time I've seen it. it. must be a new thing this year. But um, it, when I'm looking through it, it's quite useful. So I'll put some details on the screen as I talk through. Uh, I'll just refer to my notes as I'm talking. So yeah, um, my total activities for this year were uh, 422. Obviously, that includes everything. So cycling, workouts, um, what I call YSFO, which is my yoga, stretching and foam rolling. Um, obviously, any runs I did as well. So basically, any activity I've, I've logged on my course was logged on that. So 422 total activities. Uh, across the year, my total hours for 2023 were 288, 288 hours of total uh, workout time and running time, so I everything I said, everything included, compared to 198 last year. So obviously, what's that? 90 hours of, of increase in terms of various different activities, uh, which is a bit which, which I would have probably guessed that. I've, 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 I have stepped it up this year. I've done far more running than last year. 2022 was my longest mileage year ever. 
which we're going to next. So last year I did 1729, so 1729 kilometers, which is my biggest ever running year. Prior to that, I'd only ever ran above um, 1,000 miles and 1,600 kilometers once before, and that was back in 2018. And then I stopped running after that for, for a period of time. So uh, yeah, this year I've managed to run 2,750 uh, total distance. So again, that includes everything um, cycling as well, but obviously anything else is GPS based or distance based. But again, still shows an increase across the board. And again, I've not done a lot of cycling this year. And then elevate, elevation again, again, I'll just refer, I did 9,827, I think that was last year. And that's in meters, not feet. And this year I've done 14,174. So again, meters elevation gain, I'll, I'll convert that to feet on the screen. And then again, interesting, it reckons my, my biggest month in terms of time of training was July, which again, I wouldn't have guessed that. Um, I was on the back of Chester and I was probably obviously training down towards Cheshire. So maybe I did step it up and start doing long, again, longer distance stuff. Um, 30 hours um, was my biggest month. Um, and my hardest run, according to the training load, was the Chester Half Marathon in May, um, which, funny enough, I managed to get my Half Marathon PB. I felt I ran better at Chesh Cheshire in September. Even though it was a hot day, I felt that was a better race for me. Um, but the course was a bit short. That reckons I probably did a slight, a small, maybe 30 second PB on that race. But of course, reckons different that the Chester Half Marathon was a harder, harder effort for myself. See, all of them just show, obviously, I've stepped it up a little bit more this year, uh, which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to increase. Not only just everything in terms of time on feet and distance run uh, intensity as well. I wanted to obviously step it up across the board. More elevation game hills my, my, were my weakness and probably still are. So I wanted to do more elevation, which is seen a sig fairly significant jump. 5,000 metres extra is the big, biggest jump. Uh, so the last couple of stats, so you have, I managed to do 234 runs total. Uh, total distance of 2551 or 2552, depends if you look at Coros or Australia. Um, which is about 1,593, so just under 1,600 uh, miles. And my longest run of the year was a 30k long run, uh, I did just somewhere in the middle of the year. Um, so that's the total stats, yeah, so compared to last year, obviously everything's gone up, distance, elevation gain, total hours ran, uh, total activities uh, taking part in. So um, I said, I do feel good, I feel like I've, I've, I've gained fitness, I've gained experience this year, I've gained um, a better understanding of what works for me, what doesn't work for me, what I was doing too much of, what I need to do more of. So that's all positive. Um, like I said, but the headlines were that I didn't actually hit any of my goals. So uh, the start of the year or the end of last year, I set some goals. Um, I think they were pretty much a, a follow up, a kind of a rollover for me before. So yeah, my 5k goal was sub 19 um, and I only managed uh, 20 minutes, 12 seconds last year. Uh, I kept that, kept that constant and then this year I tried to go sub-19 again and uh, obviously at the minute I've only managed to run 19.35. Uh, so that, that goal wasn't achieved but it was a PB, again another 40 odd seconds off my, uh, sorry 30 odd seconds off my 5k so that's still positive, I didn't I hit the goal though. My 10k goal was sub-40, I started the year at 43.05 and then obviously got through the winter speed series I managed to get that down to 41.24 so chunk off but again chunk more to go to get to the goal but still a PB for the 10k again. And then half marathon, the goal was sub-90 uh, for the two attempts. And I only managed to 135 and then a, a 134 high, I think, if you go for Cheshire. But uh, 135 roughly for half marathon. So I got about halfway there, but not quite close enough. But again, PB from the half marathon, because prior to this year, I was running a 140 half marathon. So um, kind of bittersweet. I didn't hit any of the goals I set, but I managed to PB in all the three distances I've ran. Um, but again, those that follow along and just follow the channel for long enough, um, you're aware that I do set kind of lofty goals. I don't set like easily achievable ones just to get some success. I probably should do more of that, but uh, I tend to set kind of overly ambitious goals and, and try and reach for them. And if I fall short, like I have done this year, I've still managed to improve. So that's the way I tend to approach things. So yeah, not bad overall. I'm pretty happy with how 23 and 3 has gone as a whole. There's been um, some ups, some downs, but um, again, the downs aren't a bad thing. Um, running is a process, running is a journey, um, the, the mistakes I've made or the setbacks I've kind of had with the half marathon, not massive progress through that, uh, failing on a few time trials, etc. They're all learning curves. Um, I felt my Cheshire half marathon training block could have been much more focused, much more intensive. I only figured that out right towards the end of the taper. Um, but against the learning curve, I've, I've, I've learned from that and that'll help shape my 2024 training. Um, Touching upon that now, I'll, I will drop that next week. So again, I'm, I'm kind of limited at the minute to do these um, kind of indoorsy vlogs where I can just sit and talk. So 
Um, again, I'll drop that next week. I'll give you kind of an overview of my 2024 training. I'm starting to finalise it now. I've definitely finalised from uh, January to March. Um, and I'll give more details on that vlog next week. I'll go through how I'm chunking it, what I'm focusing on, how my training is going to look, just as a basic overview. And as I get into each of those segments of the year, I'll obviously drop a more detailed uh, overview of that specific part of the training. But yeah, I'll give an overview vlog next week. I've already done the race plan. Again, I'll tag that there. So I've already done what my training's gonna was going to look like and um, terms of more intensive and much more focused now obviously again i'll cover that next week and i've also covered what races i'll be pacing next year so that'll kind of my training will work around around that pacing schedule uh, so yeah i'll wrap it up there so got what are you guys up to in 2024 drop in the comments your plans your range your goals big or small does maybe you're just starting out does maybe you've got one race in mind have you not racing at all or you've just got a project or a, 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 again again a goal in your mind you want to run a certain distance or for the first time or you want to just run more consistently, it doesn't matter how big or small your goals are, whether you're running a 100 mile ultra or a, a one mile round your block for the first time ever, drop in the comments what you're hoping to do next year. Obviously, throughout the year, we can update me in terms of if you've managed to achieve that goal. Um, are you like me? Do you set lofty goals and try and push yourself as hard as you can? Do you set quite achievable goals? Um, but yeah, drop in the comments what you're going to be doing in 2024, your biggest uh, challenges, your biggest aims. And um, why you've decided to go for those kind of challenges and, and goals. So yeah, all the best for 2024. Hope you stay happy, healthy and injury free. Uh, that's my kind of hopes and uh, ambitions too. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to 2024 now. I've started to kind of dive into the training and start to nail it down in terms of what my schedule is going to look like, what kind of runs I'm going to be doing, how intensive it's going to be. I'm really excited to, to get it stuck into that. Um, I'm almost happy that i've got the freedom of, of no actual proper races i've got the one goal race which is the, the marathon next year in chester in october so that's a long way down the back of the year so i've got a lot of time to focus on other things first but i'm really really excited to not be kind of hamstrung by a race and that on the horizon which is going to limit what which is what i used previously to potentially limit my training intensity now i can just really hammer the training really hammer the intensity focus on making them, them improvements on, on dark nights and a country lane with no one watching, I can just me and myself, and I've got to hammer the, the hammer the workout, get it done to make that improvement. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. But yeah, uh, all the best of 2024. I said fingers crossed the camera will come quite quick now. Hopefully in a week or ten days at the most. But I'll keep everyone updated when it when it comes back. I'll be back out the door and I'll be testing my um, all my new running shoes, all my new running shoes for the rotation. I'm going to hold off doing those until the camera comes so I can do a proper. Um, vlog and, and film on the run in terms of my initial opinions of those initial sh of those shoes in my first runs so look out for all that um and then i said next week i'll drop my 2020-2024 overview for my training you'll get a bit more of an in-depth idea of what i'm going to be looking at how i'm going to be focusing it what specificity it's got within it but yeah i'll stop rambling happy running i'll see everyone on the next one